Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today I'm here to share with you logistics and tactics writing campaigns. Now, most writers end up writing fight scenes, be they verbal or physical. But some writers, especially if they're writing historical novels, epic fantasy, or military fiction, are going to be in the fight for the long haul. They're going to be writing military campaigns. At Balticon 53, Eric Hardenbrook, Kim Headley, John Appel, Mike McPhail, and Charles Gannon all sat down to talk about the tricks to handling a campaign. Sorry if I botched your names. Um, first off, a battle might be won by numbers and technology, but a campaign is run on logistics and tactics. So what are logistics? Logistics are a way of providing whatever the soldier needs be it physical things like beans, bullets, or boards, or more esoteric things like transportation, pay, and sleep. Whatever it is a soldier needs to perform well, it's up to the support staff to provide. So during the panel, we our panelists discussed and mentioned about five ways to portray the effect of logistics when writing. This is clearly not a comprehensive list, but these were some suggestions that came up during the panel. First off, the idea of living off the land. It's a traditional thing for armies, and it sounds kind of hippy-dippy. Maybe some hunting and foraging and some trading. In reality, it's mostly stealing from farmers and merchants. Plus, you know, plundering whatever cities and towns they conquered. Second thing, way that logistics impact an army and military campaign is accounting for travel time. Horses need rest, rivers flow in one direction, and oceans have tides. Misinformation can have you traveling one day in the wrong direction and taking three days to get back to where you started. Plus, you're still feeding your army and your horses and gassing your trucks and ships, etc. Um, another thing that logistics has to handle is scavenging. Just because something is broken doesn't mean it can't be fixed back at base or used for spare parts. Uh, another thing logistics has to worry about is paying attention to carrying weight. With historical inspired writing, you can get a lot of weight in that armor and that gear. As you get more modern, the gear and protection gets lighter. And so we keep adding stuff to their packs um, to keep them safer and more trucks of supplies and gadgets. In modern or futuristic settings, it could be tempting to just say, oh, I'll print out whatever they need. I mean, we have 3D printers, right? You can 3D print a gun. Well, in real life, 3D printers are slow and you still have to carry all that component material, either the plastic or the concrete or the metal. You're, well, okay, sorry. I just remembered you can 3D print cakes and I got distracted thinking about icing. But anyway, you still have to carry all of the components. Um, and the fifth suggestion for writing logistics is the concept of in the field. When not in outright battle, securing perimeters, gathering military intelligence, and calming citizens in occupied territories, etc., all of these things are going to probably require real people on their feet, face to face with hopefully nonviolent citizens, often mixed with enemies who are, you know, their relatives. Um, no matter how high tech you get, there's probably going to be some people involved on that front line, unless you annihilate everything. So, Another thing that the panelists talked about was the difference in writing campaigns versus battles. 
things that apply more to writing campaigns. Uh, first off, of course, you might have mentioned but noticed from the rest of this that logistics matter a lot. Secondly, soldiering has a lot of downtime. What sort of mischief do your soldiers get up to in their off time? Third, there are a lot more support personnel than there are frontline fighters. Feel free to incorporate them in your writing too. Fourth, what are you doing with those problem soldiers? The ones that haven't gotten themselves kicked out yet. Well, one good thing, if you're a writer, maybe not them, to do with them is to give them a mission. Either you get the mission accomplished or you end up with fewer mouths to feed. Uh, another thing that you have to deal with campaigns that maybe you don't have to deal with in battles so much is uh, the concept of the command and control center, especially with modern ones. It's not just some guy standing in the middle barking out orders, uh, typically. Um, it's more like 20 people staring at screens while information comes at them and they wait until something that they need to share shows up. Um, with the guy in charge going around going, hmm, oh, hmm, and hopefully listening to his subject matter experts. And which leads into the next idea, which is our orders are not barked out at the last second when you're about to go out the door. Okay, you go here and you go there and let's go, go, go. No, no. Any halfway competent military is going to have multiple plans already discussed, already coordinated, maybe even practiced. When it's go time, the order is going to be more like, we're good to go for plan B, contingency three, and go, go. Uh, and finally, the concept of reverse engineering is very crucial in campaigns. I mean, Romans were huge into this. It's been around for a while. Don't assume just because one army has the technical advantage that they're going to keep it for long. Even if you're writing fantasy, if you've got magic with verbal and physical components, people are going to be spying. My thought? Add something extra and hide some of the actual requirements. Make them work for it. Um... And those, those were the thoughts that were shared. Uh, a few closing thoughts on war, uh, some quotes from the panel. First off, a classic, friendly fire, is it? Military intelligence, is it? Just-in-time supplies, are they? The next thought, war is entropy, not order. And finally, if you would have peace, prepare for war. Have you written any campaigns? Do you have any uh, tips that our panelists ran out of time to mention? If so, put them in the comments below. As always, feel free to subscribe and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Next week, I'll be back with more writing tips from my over 24 hours of programming at Balticon 53. Uh, tips to share. So see you then. Bye-bye.